Hello again, everyone. Wow, the world is an interesting place these days. So, why not just go play some video games? Oh, and there you are. I thought I would be looking a bit, a bit longer for you. Well, anyway, um, we need to speak to Alan here to proceed with the game. We're going to do just that, but uh, first of all, brace yourselves. Uh, hold on to your drawers and don't piss in them. Let's trap ourselves in. Because we are going places. This is, um, well, I mean, this is not exactly where the game will just uh, pull out all the stops, but um, many stops will become undone, shall we say. Yeah, let's go poking on Cosmos. Current output is 5.806 LPP. Not even 3% of the required levels. In other words, you're saying it's impossible to open the door to Lost Jerusalem. Open the door? It's doubtful whether we can even find it. I've told you repeatedly that the emulators were mere supplements. You're the one who ignored that. Because of you, we've lost a valuable asset. I've done what I can with what we have, but it's not going to make much difference. Even Mizrahi couldn't pull this off without the original. So, have you finally come to acknowledge that lunatic's work? I'm just being objective. No one in the universe is as knowledgeable in this field as he was. <coughs> Um, yeah, sorry to interrupt here, but um, just a little reflection there um, on um, uh, how Margulis called Joachim Mizrahi a lunatic. Now, if you've played the game, you sort of know how... Well, if you've played through the entire trilogy or watched my previous Let's Plays, you, you will know uh, what story arc that guy goes through. Um, but I just want to point out that while Margulis's use of the word um, lunatic is in line with the uh, official narrative and uh, what we have heard so far in the game, uh, do keep in mind that uh, Margulis has, shall we say, um, an ideological bias. And uh, uh, it is, uh, keep in mind that it is quite possible that he is calling Joachim Mizrahi a lunatic through that lens of this uh, fucked up ideology that we are not very well introduced to in this game. Okay, did I lose anyone there? Yeah, probably, whatever, let's keep going. Um, stupid pause button. We can't keep our commander waiting any longer. We'll proceed with Plan 401. Plan 401, huh? That seems a bit extreme to me. The 100 series that Helmer's protege is babysitting, not only does it contain the entire record of Mizrahi's research, but the access code for the UMN transfer column to the sealed area of Old Milsha also resides in it. Treat it too roughly, and you'll lose everything. I'm well aware of the importance of Milsha and the Y data. That's why I'm using him. I do not like him. His eyes share the same look as Mizrahi's. The same as yours. <laughs> well, I'll be waiting for the good news. Belladry. Secure a channel to our commander. I want to report this and discuss our plans for manipulating the committee. I see. So what do you want me to do? The situation is proceeding as planned. Don't interfere with it for now. Of course. I can't imagine the second Milshan government and the Kukai Foundation will simply hand it over. If this situation warrants, we may have to use 
the Song of Nephilim. Now this is a surprise. I thought you hated it with a passion. I'm just saying even your toys have their uses. Then why don't you join me? We can enjoy the show together. Thanks, I'll pass. I don't share your perverse taste in hobbies. <laughs> yeah, right, you gutless bastard. Albedo. A URTV. A monster born of life recycling. There are plenty of mentally unstable life recycling variants out there. Just as Cherenkov was one of them. If he starts getting impatient and moves on his own... You needn't worry about that. Time means nothing to him. The only thing that interests him is that realia. Are you really going to use the Song of Nephilim? Pellegree, have you ever heard it? That song draws everything unto madness. Milsha, I never thought I'd come back under these situations. Chief, is something wrong? Huh? Uh, oh no, it's uh, nothing. How's that, Cosmos? Fine. There are no problems. Please continue. And once again, it's nothing. We will soon be entering the Milshan star system. We will be entering orbit at 1400 hours local time. Second Milsha spaceport flight control, transmitting flight plan, requesting permission to dock. Hey, Momo. Yes? What is it? We'll be going our separate ways once we get to second Milsha, right? Yes. I don't know if Reallians believe in carrying charms or not, but... Here, take this. It's for luck. It's so pretty. What is it? It's a bullet from a long time ago. Look. It's got a good luck phrase on it. Sayonara, baby! Thank you. I'll keep it safe. Oh, wait. Hold on a sec. Keep it in your pants, bro. <laughs> now, I think uh, in universe uh, he's probably using an ether. But it seems a bit unusual. <sighs> there we go. Try it on. Wow! You can do things like that, too? That's wonderful! It kind of tires me out a bit, though. And, of course, the number 666 is a reference to... The what a strange welcome! Are they escorting us in uh, this time? No They're right blocking uh, Yeah, sorry to interrupt you, ladies. You just... I'll I'll be I'll keep it brief. Um, for uh, reasons unknown to me, anyway, there were uh, I believe a grand total of six hundred and sixty-nine URTVs produced in this universe. Um, Rubido or Junior is of course number 666 and Guinan is 669. 
uh, um, veterans of the game will know that uh, uh, Albedo is also a URTV in, in the same series. Um, that should come as no surprise to anyone. Um, I wonder if he is number uh, 667 or 65. I think it's 67. Uh, we, we, we'll learn more about him in episode 2 anyway. Uh, but yeah, this number of the beast is something you should just take a pin in uh, when we uh, uh, get going on his character development, in particular in episode 2. But for now, we shall proceed. In the way? Without this is skipping. no welcome. As you can see from this video, the Kukai Foundation has engaged in what is clearly an act of aggression against the 117th Marine Division. From the events that followed, we can only come to the conclusion that this was an act of rebellion orchestrated by the Foundation's creators, the Second Milshan Government. In light of these troubling events, we hereby enter a motion for the following. Per Article 104, an emergency suspension of the vested rights of Second Milsha's autonomous government. I'd like to add that the 422nd Fleet from Gedalia has been dispatched to the scene in order to surround and contain both the Kukai Foundation and Second Milsha. Hold on there. Won't that constitute an unauthorized use of force? The deployment is in accordance with the Federation Emergency Powers Act. It is fully within our powers. I would think that the Kukai Foundation possessing that level of weaponry is a far greater problem in and of itself. Perhaps they were heroes during the conflict, or whatever in the past. But the current situation is a result of letting them have their way for so long. The Zohar belonged to the entire Federation. Why should Second Milsha have sole control? The decision to turn the artifacts of old Milsha over to an impartial third party was decided by vote 14 years ago. We're talking about the dangers of it being monopolized by a corporation. The Kukai Foundation was converted after the completion of the post-war cleanup and their own disarmament. Since taking on their current name and converting to a business, their primary source of income has become entertainment and tourism. How could they possibly have a vested interest in the Zohar? You call that disarmed? It's just enough for self-defense. Think back to the reason the organization was formed. Not only that, we can't ignore their recent achievements against the Gnosis. Can we be certain these accusations aren't merely jealousy on the part of a state that didn't receive post-war government handouts? How dare you! I've heard rumors that Milsha was secretly involved not only with the current planetary disappearance case, but also with other recent developments, including the anti-Gnosis Sohar project. I'd like to hear the contact subcommittee's thoughts on all this. Dr. Mizrahi? We moved the 100 series Realian to second Milsha in accordance with the original plan. We're following the protocols. But I wonder... Have you forgotten that it was Milsha that produced the lunatic that summoned the Gnosis and tried to destroy the Federation? I sympathize with your desire to defend your late husband, but... Perhaps you are too deeply involved in this situation. I would not have expected my presence here to be misconstrued in such a manner. Oh, really? That this is just nothing to do with governmental policy. You will just have the Federation if you continue. Jealousy on the part of the state, that's all Order! Order! We've just patched in with Representative Helmer. I'd like to hear about the situation from the second Milshan government. Well, Representative Helmer? 
accordance with Federation law, we hereby place the Kokai Foundation under arrest for the suspicion of violating Article 798, Chapter 37, Collection and Concealment of Defense Information, and Article 2153, Chapter 105, Acts of Aggression Against Federation Vessels, and hereby revoke all rights previously granted. Shut down your engines and relinquish your weapons immediately. Acts of Aggression Against Federation Vessels? Furthermore, should the Milshan government allow the Kukai Foundation to dock the Durandal, we will issue a state of emergency notice under Article 2384, Chapter 115, Part 18, Conspiracy what in the world to is Aid going Insurrection. On? It looks like they think the Durandal conspired with the Milshan government in an attack on the Federation fleet. Huh? What Federation fleet? Hey, check out the network news on the sub-monitor! You're not gonna believe this! On the morning of the 21st, it appears that the 177th Marine Division flagship Waglinde of the Galaxy Federation's Tessadora Division came under attack by a heavily armed ship belonging to the Kukai Foundation. The Waglinde? What? I thought the Gnosis attack had been reported already. The company has been identified as operating in conjunction with the second Milshan government. Considerations for the possibility of treason have forced the Federation Parliament to dispatch... They did a good job doctoring that video. But how did they synchronize the battle coordinates as well? Damn! Let's just uh, pause there for a second. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Lots and lots of plot points here. Of course, you saw all the machinations and... Uh, political intrigue and manipulation or whatever the hell else we saw back there in the uh, uh, what, look, what looked like a uh, senate chamber or, or well some kind of parliamentary shenanigans um, I don't know if it will happen shortly after this but there is someone else uh, connected to that shall we say um, in case uh, there's some there's someone new watching this I'll just let that come as a surprise to you uh, you <laughs> you will appreciate uh, me not spoiling that one um, as for the rest this thing that uh, the Wogolinda fleet came under attack by Gnosis not being reported should immediately stand out to you as a little bit sketchy. Uh, um, I mean, who knows about this? We, we of course reported in to Vector. Um, right, we had that, that little talk with Miyuki, right? And, uh, well, you think Miyuki would keep anything a secret? <laughs> Seriously? Um, and uh, of course, the whole thing, uh, well, the Wogalindi itself was uh, operated by a Federation crew. That is a Galactic Federation, that is not Vector. Okay? These guys would not report this to Vector, they would report it to the Galactic Federation. And that is the Federation that launched this attack so while we don't actually see it happen we should reasonably expect the Galactic Federation to know about the Gnosis attack although to be fair the only one uh, the only two groups that we know from um, watching the cutscenes in the game firsthand that know about this attack are Vector and Margulis's team. And now they are a UTIC organization, though. Well, let's just say it's not straight as straightforward as that. I think there are factions within that group as well, but. So we shouldn't. Uh, land this squarely on Utic's feet, but Margulis knows about that attack, and he knows that the Gnosis came. Uh, let's 
see what else. Uh, no, I don't think there's anything else right at this point. No, there, there was that uh, other uh, spider in the web that I um, wanted to mention, but let's leave that for later. Carry on. That's from when we fought the UTIC organization. Those bastards were recording it. I see. That would explain how the absolute coordinates match. I guess that's their indisputable proof. Even I'm starting to think that we did it. Considering the situation, you don't sound very worried. In any event, this is confirmation that the remnants of the UTIC organization have infiltrated both the Federation government and the military. Which means... their next target is... This is such a blatant lie, it's ludicrous! As survivors, if we testify... They'll just claim that you survived because you were in on the conspiracy. This is insane! Do you think this is why Headquarters hasn't communicated with us? Lapis Roman of the Galaxy Federation Special Ops Command Headquarters, Intelligence Bureau. I hereby place this ship under custody of the Galaxy Federation. I understand you're from the Woglinde. I'll take you in as witnesses. All vector property will be temporarily confiscated as evidence. Cosmos! Here's the 100 series Realian under warrant. Hey, don't hurt her! Detain them in a single room and watch them carefully. All of them? Splitting them up will only serve to underman our guard posts. Investigate as much of the ship as possible before we rendezvous with the others. Yes, ma'am! Gainan Kukai, you are hereby under arrest for suspicion of treason against the Galaxy Federation. Come with me. As you wish. It's all orchestrated too well. Huh? The fleet deployment came too quickly. They must have been prepared to ensure that Momo would return to them, regardless of what happened. Or perhaps ensnaring second Milsha was part of their plan from the very beginning. As a neutral territory, second Milsha was invested with a whole bunch of rights and legal privileges after the Milshan conflict. There are a whole lot of folks who still have problems with that. Even outside of the UTIC organization. The asteroid where Momo was imprisoned. I wondered where the information about that place came from. Now it seems like it was all part of the plan from the very beginning. Do you mean from when Mommy sent you to rescue me? You don't think there are UTIC members within the subcommittee itself? It's not inconceivable. Perhaps it was the very person who arranged for Momo's rescue, Dr. Yuri Mizrahi herself. No! Mommy would never do something like that! Alan! I, uh... Sorry. Open it.
Helmer? Sorry to keep you waiting, Guinan. I'm in a somewhat difficult position myself at the moment, but I'm doing what I can with the Federation Parliament. Now the woman beside you is Captain Lapis Roman. Several years ago, I sent her to infiltrate the military in order to keep tabs on the UTIC members within it. She is one of my most trusted subordinates. Always prepared, aren't you? Caution is something that comes naturally with age. Captain Roman will investigate the Durandal's records before someone modifies them. Please assist her. Understood. I'll give her the Durandal's master key. Sir. There's an EPR comm from the CEO of Vector. Vector? All right, I'll take it. If you'll excuse me, I'll let you know if there are any developments. Busy as always. Not half as much as you. It's good to see you again, Representative Helmer. Likewise, Mr. Wilhelm. We haven't spoken since you resigned as Executive Committee Director. I'm well aware of the situation. Allow me to make a recommendation to the Parliament as well. Mr. Wilhelm, you're too kind. Actually, my concerns have even prompted me to dispatch the Damarung, which is currently underway to the Milshan system. Your concerns? This incident. Surely you've realized by now that... There's no question of the UTIC organization's involvement in it. Exactly. Given that, it can only mean they're after one thing. The original Zohar in stasis on Milsha, and... Udu. We can't allow that to be awakened again. I believe our firm's Cosmos and its related staff are currently in your care. I apologize, Mr. Wilhelm. I'm afraid the link between the Kukai Foundation and the Second Milshan government is... Ah, of course. Then please pass a message on to Guinan for me. Surely that would be acceptable? That much I can do. Tell him that we'll lend him Cosmos for a while, and he can use her as he sees fit. We still have time before the Zohar project commences, and in the worst-case scenario, she'll definitely be of use. We'll have the second R&D division and the tactical sim lab provide support. Are you sure? Isn't that top secret? It's a calculated risk. From our point of view, the more real-world data we get, the better. All right. I'll convey your message to Master Guinan. Thank you. Good day, then. Udu. And with that, it is time to actually call this um, cutscene the game too. Oh wow, did I seriously not number that? I don't know. Oh. Okay, so um, this has been an episode of cutscenes. Um, a little curio. Uh, the Demerung, uh, in German for Twilight, by the way, uh, that is where uh, Wilhelm's office is located. So when you see him in this in his uh, little uh, triangular penthouse thing, he is on the Demerung. So that he has dispatched the Demerung to this location means um, Shion's boss is on the way. Because how could this get any more sane? <laughs> oh yeah. We are going places, people. Stay tuned.